everybody. Welcome back to Free Friday. Subscribe right over there. Right there. Not over there. Right there. Subscribe today for uh, hundreds of free harmonica lessons. Uh, and a new one every single Friday. And today's Friday. So welcome. Hi, how are you doing? I'm, I'm okay. I'm in, I'm in my mom's garage in Washington State visiting mom. And uh, that means that uh, I get to chill out here and uh, have some hot cocoa. And uh, it's not too cold. And make harmonica lessons in the garage for you guys. <laughs> As promised. A couple weeks back I made a, a lesson on how to get single notes. And we did that lip pursing. And in that lesson I said I was going to show you another way. And here's the other way. It's called tongue blocking. So you know you put your, your mouth over the harmonica and then you put your tongue there. And then you play one hole out of the corner of your mouth. And a lot of people like playing it that way better. As a matter of fact, that's the way I think you're supposed to play it. Well, it was definitely the way it was designed to be played. And when I was a little kid, you know, I got this little booklet with it that said, well, this is how you do it. And it said, you tongue block. And I didn't read the booklet. I threw it away. And uh, years later, people told me about it. And I was like, oh, that's how those other guys get those sounds. That's right. Right? That little pop 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 pop. Right? But it's just a good way to learn how to play single notes. You don't have to put the pop pop on there. So, how do you do it? Oh, by the way, I have a G golden melody, right? But hey, let's just switch to a C. Let's switch to a C. C for everybody. There it is, C. We're gonna put our mouth over the first three holes of the harmonica. So just right there, holes one, two, and three on our C harmonica. We'll do blow first, we'll do a blow first. Now what we're gonna try to do is put our mouth over one, two, and three, but then put our tongue on one and two. So you might be saying to yourself, this is crazy. I can't, there's no way that I can possibly aim my tongue at this small space. Guess what? It's not as hard as you think it is. It just seems crazy right now. At least it seemed crazy to me. It seemed crazy to me. But then in the beginning, when they told me that I had to play just one of these holes, lip pursing, just, just by doing this, that seemed crazy to me too, right? So, hey, maybe it's all just crazy. So one, two, and three. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put my tongue on holes one and two. So it's okay to be a little sloppy and get your tongue on, on some of the plastic or the wood on whatever you happen to have on your harmonica. And we're gonna block off these two and then play this one right there, right? Number three blow. We're gonna play that right out of the corner of our mouth. Now that slapping sound is for me taking my tongue on and off. My first uh, blues harmonica teacher, I say blues because the guy that taught me blues, his name was D.W. Gill. He's on here on YouTube still. Anyway, that cat said, he said, take a mouthful of harp and then put your tongue on. So now I'm just playing three and my mouth, my mouth is over holes one, two, and three and my tongue is blocking one and two, and I'm blowing. <laughs> Mouth full of harp, and then I'm putting my tongue on. What's my tongue look like? It's kind of like I'm using the flat part of my tongue. Not, I'm not pointing it. I can, but I'm not. I'm kind of curling it and using the flat part. That's how inaccurate it can be. So now once I get that three blow, and again, I don't have to slap, I don't have to take it on and off, but, but it's a really cool technique. That's rapid fire on and off. But here's just regular. 
Once I get that blow three with one and two blocked, I want to keep my tongue on there and just inhale. So I'm exhaling and inhaling. I'm exhaling. <laughs> So now you just want to try to slide either down or up. Now, if I slide down, I'm only going to be blocking one hole. So now I'm playing two draw, which is the same note as three blow. They sound a little different tonally, but they're the same note, I promise. Now I'm going to try to exhale on two blow. So I'm just be putting my mouth over holes one and two and blocking just one. So my tongue will be over the, the plastic or the wood, and then I'm going to be blocking this hole too, and then just playing hole number two. So just that one right there is the only one that's going to get played. And my tongue and my mouth will be over all of this right here and blocking, blocking right there. And I can exhale. Now this is a big part of the old blue sound. And it's just that, it's that nice little chordy, you know, it's like it imitates a shuffle drum when you do this slap. When you, you, you play the chord and then you slap the note down with your tongue. So I'm allowing holes one, two, and three to come in, the whole chord. And then I'm shutting it down by blocking one and two. And it gives me that nice little pata, puta, just like I was playing a shuffle drum beat. Puta, 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 boom, pa, puta, 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 Anyway, that's what gives me that nice little shuffle sound. Nice little patat, you know, a little slower. This, this, this motion I'm doing with my hand, that's me trying to mimic what my tongue is doing. wondering how well but he's not doing it on the bends yeah i am it's crazy right i didn't know you could do that either it was like probably like as recently as like maybe like 15 16 years ago i found out you could bend tongue blocking i didn't even i've been playing 30 something years i so it was less than half of my playing life i didn't know you could even do that even that weird vibrato i'm doing with that All tongue blocking. So that's how that sunny boy got that. We 
Yeah. That's it. So be patient. Be patient. Be patient with yourselves. Get a mouthful of harp and then put your tongue on. Yes, be very patient with yourself. There's always something we can go back to to learn when things that we're learning now get too hard. But you want to strike that balance between giving it, you know, three or four minutes every day, every other day, and then you get frustrated and then you kind of go back to something else. You don't want to shut down is what you don't want to do. You don't want to get to the place where you're like, I'm not going to do this, or this is dumb, or I'm already good enough already, I don't need to do this. Those are all the excuses that I made over the years, and don't end up like me. <laughs> because I'm telling you, this is what happened to me. I was rejecting this tongue blocking thing and thinking that I only needed one armature. And I've seen other people do the exact opposite. I've seen tongue blockers say, I don't need to learn a lip person. Well, there's certain licks that sound better lip pursing and certain things that you can only do lip pursing. And there's th that Sunny Boy thing that I just did. Uh, you can try all you want lip pursing. You can slop it up. But it'll never sound like the way Sunny Boy does it, tongue blocking, unless you're tongue blocking. Right, so you, you gotta fall in love with the embouchure. And that's what it took me, you know. I'll tell you how I started doing it. I knew that I needed to do it, and I was working with my students, and sometimes I would just to keep things entertaining when I was teaching basic things, I would just teach them tongue blocking. Now, I, they didn't know I was tongue blocking, I was just playing. <laughs> just doing the basic exercise for them, and I was just tongue blocking to practice for myself. Well, before you know it, I found that there were a lot of things that I liked better about playing single note tongue blocking. And over time, I fell in love with not only how it sounded, but how it felt, how it, the way that the note vibrated. <laughs> And the other thing too is, if you're one of these guys that's already tongue blocking octaves, and you wanna go back down, you no longer have to switch back to the lip pursing on, but you just leave your tongue right in that place. So it's almost, well, it's not almost. Once you learn it, it is easier. I don't have to switch my armature. And it becomes really, really fun, especially going up, like from three draw. Like I heard Gary Primage say, he tongue blocked from three draw up. And that really makes sense. I mean, I can understand not tongue blocking one and two, but man, I'm telling you, when you get on that three, you're gonna want it because you slide right into that one and four split octave split. And you don't have to, you don't have to switch your armature and it just makes a lot of things easier, percussive stuff. the thing that I really noticed about it. It really affected my time. I'm going to go back to my, my uh, G harp here. I really started to feel time a lot better when I started tongue blocking single notes. Just the, the slapping, the late papa. And I started doing stuff like...
just became fun. It's a fun thing to do. And that's what you want. You want it to be fun. But sometimes <clears throat> before we get to the fun part, we got to go through a little bit of that awkward, strenuous, I don't want to do this. I don't like it. It's normal to have thoughts like I'm never going to be able to do this. Just don't entertain that thought for very long. It's normal to have thoughts that I'm not good enough. That's normal. Just don't entertain that thought. It's also normal to have thoughts of, I'm already good enough. I don't need this. Or the other way that I'm playing it is good enough already. That's normal too. Just don't entertain it. Put it on the back burner, do the work, do the exercise. That's all there is for this week's Free Friday, broadcasting from Washington State. You know what happened to me today? I was in a bad mood. I was, <laughs> I woke up and everybody wanted a bunch of stuff out of me and I didn't get my little important morning ritual in. You got to have that important morning ritual. To me, I wake up in the morning, I take a deep breath, I think about my buddy Lee Mack, who says it's gonna be another great day, and I say that. Why? Lee Mack says the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between a truth and a lie, so when you wake up in the morning, you might as well tell it something good. And I didn't do that. And I, the first thing was, hey, can we go to this donut shop? That's the first thing I heard as soon as I opened my eyes. And I said, yeah, sure, let's go to the donut shop. And then, you know what, I went and I jumped in the shower and I broke the shower head off. And then the shower, the water went everywhere and I had to fix the water. And then I, I was, uh, and then I cut my finger trying to looking for a toothbrush. I forgot my razor was in my bag and I cut my finger and my finger was bleeding all over the place. And then I was thinking, oh boy, I got to get free Friday done and I got lessons and I got to get to this donut shop and now I got to buy a new shower head to fix my mom's shower. And oh my Lord, they still haven't paid me from this session and I don't know where all my money was and that check didn't go through. I don't know why it didn't go through, but it didn't go through. What am I going to do about money? And I started worrying about all this stuff and I was having a bad day. And there I am coming out of the hardware store with my brand new shower head walking down the streets of Washington and this fella, I think his name was Russell. Hey, Russell, if, if it's not, <laughs> I know he's watching. He said, he said, I heard, I'm in the middle of this town, right? In this strange town, you know, I can't tell you what town it is because, because you know what? I've been getting some crazy messages lately from crazy people, <laughs> crazier than me a little bit. But anyway, anyway, I'm walking down in this town that I don't live in 3000 miles away from home. And I hear Jason. I turn and there's this fella there and he says, hey man, come here. He said, I watch all your YouTube videos, bro. He goes, I can't believe you. He goes, you're a very recognizable cat. And he goes, I saw the hair, right? He goes, I knew it was you. And he said, I just want to say thanks for everything you do. That meant a world to me. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for coming back. Thank you for little moments like that. Thank you for the beautiful messages that you send me on Patreon. Some fellow yesterday sent a message and he must have hit the wrong button because the message sent 66 times. <laughs> I woke up and I look at, that was the other thing. I look at the messages and I saw 66 messages from the same guy on Patreon and I said, oh boy, that's why I don't tell people what town I'm in. Not because of him, that was an accident, but I've seen stuff like that happen, you know. Anyway, it's been another great day, regardless. Regardless, regardless, regardless. And every day that's hard doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad day. That it might be hard today so that tomorrow's easier, right? And we used to have a saying we used to put on our t-shirts we stole from a skateboarding world industries ad that said making today worse <laughs> so tomorrow seems better, right? It's pretty funny, right? But you know, on a less pessimistic note though, what you're doing right now is going to pay off soon and you got to learn to fall in love with it. And that can take time. It just takes time. But I promise you, if you keep at this thing, some of the hardest things <clears throat> that this instrument <clears throat> has to offer bending, you know, getting those bends in tune, the hardest things are the things that later sound the best. I used to think that three double bend was the worst sounding note in the world. I couldn't get it. Right, and now. <laughs> and now. And 
It's one of the prettiest notes on the thing. So some of the hard stuff becomes the most beautiful. Isn't that funny how that is? Anyway, look, no credits today. I just want to say thanks to Blue Moon Harmonicas. Thanks to Honer Harmonicas. Thanks to Lone Wolf Pedals. Thank you very much to Harp Gear Amplifiers. And thank you to Pedal Bad. Thank you for watching. And thank you, my Patreon patrons, for keeping... This alive, really, it's Patreon that's keeping this alive. If you're not a Patreon member and you don't want to be, don't worry about it. But you owe a big thanks to everybody that's on Patreon right now because they do keep me motivated. They make sure that I keep making these videos and it's become a wonderful community. I'm starting to watch them talk to themselves. Talk to each other, I mean. Talk to each other in the Patreon thing and solve problems and ask questions and answer things and... Just to think that, you know, I played a part in bringing these people together. I'm just so happy right now. Love y'all. Appreciate it. Tongue blocking, single notes. It's not as hard as you think. Or if it is, don't worry. It'll be worth it later. Bye.